Good evening, guys. Hope you're all okay. I am doing a video showing what my G-Shock GA2100, the triple black, looks like after around seven months of ownership. Now, this watch, as you probably know from previous videos of mine, is a real hero in my collection. It's one of the lightest, one of the most slimline, one of the most beautiful also uh, G-Shocks that I have in my ownership. I bought it in Thailand. I had a very lucky um, shopping expedition where I walked into a shop and it was sat there, completely unplanned, completely unexpected to pick it up, but it was there and of course I had to have it there and then. I've owned this, this watch for seven months and as most of you who watch my channel already will know, I do wear watches properly as they are designed to be. I don't mollycoddle these things. I don't um, put them in boxes and never use them ever. I will use them for sport. I'll use them in the office. I'll use them when I'm traveling and I'm not scared to bash them up a bit, to be honest. Now, it's worth noting that obviously I have a number of G-Shocks in my possession and therefore I can't wear this watch all the time. I did a rough calculation and I estimate that in the last seven months or so I've worn this probably around 80 to 90 days um, at work in the office and I've probably worn it another 50 days or so in kind of smart, casual environments out and about. So I think it's fair to say that I have used this a significant amount to show to what degree it stood up to that level of usage. Now, I have not used this for sport. I'll generally refer to something like my Mudman, which I actually happen to be wearing right now. Or more recently, I've got hold of the GGB100, um, and also the Rangeman, they're the ones I'll generally use for, for sporting and gym activities. But this has definitely got a lot of wear under its belt. One of the things that I think you're probably most interested about is why I went for this strap rather than the metal strap. Now, there's two very clear, distinct reasons for that, and it starts with Years ago, I had this problem. When I worked in the city in London, I had a Tag Heuer Carrera. I actually still have that watch. Now, one of the annoyances for me was that I had a wonderful watch. It was beautiful, excellent build quality. But when I was at the gym, and I'd go through periods of maybe working out more so than other times, the, the um, width of my wrist would change due to muscle to a degree that the watch either got too tight on the strap or it got too thin and for me there's nothing worse than having an uncomfortable strap on a watch particularly if it's metal if it's too tight you just don't want to wear it if it's not tight enough and the watch flaps around your wrist that just looks awful it's really not the way to wear a watch in my humble opinion and therefore, I'm not a massive fan of metal straps just because it takes a little bit more um, maintenance. I'm the kind of person who likes to kind of set something and forget it. Uh, I don't like fiddling around too much with, with watches. Another reason why I like love G-Shock so much is because they're so low maintenance and you don't have to spend much time maintaining them whatsoever. Um, you know, I, I went through a period of using wind-up watches and things like this, but to be honest, I'm not massively enamored with the idea of picking up a watch after a weekend away where the watch hasn't been used, it hasn't been um, charged by the, by the kinetic energy, and then you realize that the watch then needs charging, it's not saying the right time, you're in a rush, you're trying to um, get ready for a meeting or something, and therefore you basically just have an extra thing to do. G-Shock takes all this out of your hands. Wonderful, wonderful watches. 
And that was one of the main reasons why I love them so much. The second reason why I don't use the metal bezels so much is, or, or I don't use them at all these days now, including when I purchased this GA2100, is simply because I have a fair amount of hair on my wrist. Now, people will say that depends what, what um, bezel you're wearing, what company it comes from. They will say, look, you are not going to get your hair nipped by the metal bezel if you wear the right kind of watch. Maybe that's so, but I'll tell you what, it's too much of annoyance for me to risk. I much prefer something that's simple, functional, in my opinion, still looks good, but I know there's zero chance of hair falling between the cracks of a metal um, strap and causing me any annoyance. In fact, guys, it just struck me <coughs> while I was sitting here, why not go and get my Tag Hyo Carrera and explain exactly what I mean. So I'm just gonna shift these G-Shocks aside for a second. And I'm just going to take off my Mudman. And I'm just going to put on this. So as I say, I've owned this since, um, when will it have been, 2000 and, 2006 maybe? It's the classic TQ Carrera. I'm a big fan of um, of the look and feel of this watch. It was my first foray into into watches of this this kind. And I'll tell you what, it's you know it served me fantastically. And even as I see it on my wrist here, you'll see. Oh, let's lift that up a bit. You'll see it looks wonderful. Desire very elegant, very um, refined look. It's, you can see it's had a lot of wear. This could definitely do with a polish and a clean. I haven't sent it for maintenance ever in its life. So obviously it needs some of that. Um, but yeah, I've got a real soft spot for this watch. It really, it really um, was a wonderful, time of my life and wonderful little um, gift to myself when I was uh, in the city. So there are the two reasons why I don't go for this metal bezel. Actually, hang on a sec, I've just forgotten the entire reason why I put the tag on. So if I hold that here, you can see it does um, have a very good quality metal bracelet on it. It also has the adjustment. However, there's no micro adjusting in here. It is purely, if you need to change the size of that significantly, you have to put an extra link in or take another one out. And that, my friend, is uh, not a quick and easy activity necessarily. For, actually, for some people, it probably is a quick and easy activity for me. It takes a little bit longer than I'd like to. Anyway, so I've actually tried some... Um, at one point, I was wearing the NATO strap on this, believe it or not, and it looked great. Um, that was my attempt of wearing a strap on this watch, which wouldn't cause the problems that I described before, the nipping of the hairs and the fact that I needed to change the, um, the sizing quite regularly if I was hitting the gym a lot. Uh, but yeah, it came back onto its original strap after after a while, just because I thought for the sake of originality, you know, keep it that way. So, I know I've really digressed, and I won't apologise because you probably want to know a bit of the background anyway. So, back on to the GA2100. Um, I want to do some real up-close shots of this. So you see exactly how it's fared in those, in the days that I've owned it. Now, what you're going to see, first and foremost, is a very clean bezel. All the way around here, there's no scraping, no damage, no lack of um, kind of integrity of the, of the wording, which is ingrained on the front of the bezel there whatsoever. 
uh, you will also notice that in a certain light, you can see some slight swirls on the face. Now, in this light, just to make a point, I'm going to take that off. <clears throat> give me a second. I'm going to give it a good rub. And then I'm going to put it back. And we'll see if we can still see them in the light. And the answer is, yes, you can. Now, why... What I suspect is that that is some um, very light scraping effect. I'm not, I'm, I can't recall when I've done this or how that's happened. But yes, there has been some impact on the face and that is certainly noticeable. Two comments on that. One is that I'm sure with a decent amount of um, elbow grease that will probably come out. Um, I'm no expert on the maintenance of watch faces and what to put on. If anyone's got any smart ideas, please let me know and I'll give it a try and report back. The other thing is, which will be quite a good experiment in terms of um, checking out Casio and G-Shock's customer um, relations, is taking it to the supplier uh, and the local supplier. I bought this in, in Thailand, actually, so I, I don't live in Thailand, but taking it to um, a local supplier and saying, look, can I order a new face for this watch? Um, sorry, a new screen for this watch and, and see what they come back with. Uh, it'll be nice to know what their what their thoughts are on that. And, um, you know, not that I think it, I, I um, am necessarily due a replacement. And I definitely wouldn't be expecting it for free. But uh, it'd be nice that if I can pay for it, that I could get it replaced at some point. Because this is the kind of watch I do like keeping absolutely perfect. So if that doesn't brush out on the face, I will look for a, an option to, um, to improve it eventually. So, the next part. Let's have a look around the side of the watch and the buttons. You can see, yeah, you can definitely see that these, this has been used, this watch. And... If I come very close, you can see, uh, I wouldn't even call it a scuffing, you can just see a little bit of um, texture on there from where it's been, been rubbed. However, giving it a little bit of a shine there, you'll see is completely fine. Let me just refocus that. You see it's completely fine now. So that just goes to show there's no damage. Excuse that here. No damage on the buttons whatsoever, they just need a little bit of a polish up. And that is the same on the other side as well. Let me give that a brush. Yeah, wonderful. Polishes up very, very nice. So, now onto the, what we might call the connection between the bezel and the strap here. You can see there is no damage in, in there whatsoever. Um, you can see also that's the classic quick release for the, for the straps that the GA2100 has. I've never actually taken the straps off this watch, I'll be honest. Um, but looks in good condition. No perishing, no problems whatsoever around this strap connection. Now on the back of the watch, you'll notice here it says CMG Central Marketing Group. What that is, is it denotes the fact that I bought this in Thailand. So when I was in Bangkok, I picked this up and my understanding is that CMG is the main supplier of Casio and G-Shock in Thailand. And it came with that sticker on the back. And just purely from a um, sentimental point, I have kept that on. And yeah, it's lasted reasonably well, actually, considering the amount I've worn the watch. The back plate itself. No noticeable damage. No, um, no rusting or anything like this. 
Yep, fair to say. All What's about much. that all important strap? So, you know, you hear people talking about the perishing of G Shock straps, and I hear enough stories to believe it must be true um, in some instances, but with my personal experience, because I've never seen anything of the type of, you know, with over 25 years of use of these things, I still think that if it does happen to you, you're probably very unfortunate um, or you've exposed it to a lot of heat stress or something like this. I, I uh, you know, I, I'm just always surprised when I hear these things being said about the, the straps degrading and perishing. This strap is pretty thin. I think it's fair to say that as, to, as far as G-Shock straps go, it's one of the most base models. Um, that's fine. When I bought the watch, I, I knew what I was letting myself in for. I didn't need anything swanky. I didn't need anything, um, you know, particularly flash. I just wanted something that was comfortable because I thought the watch itself was good looking enough to be able to get away with such a basic strap. Now, what you'll notice is where the clasp has sat on my wrist. Yes, there's a small, not even indentation inside, it's just rubbed, and that's to be expected. When you wear a watch like that, it's obviously gonna have a little bit of um, wear in that respect. The kind of undulation, the, um, the change in color here, on the kind of, if you look at the, this area, you can see a little bit of change in color. Again, that's just down to the different oils, which, um, and, and I guess liquids that are, the watch strap is exposed to. If I give it a quick rub, let's see how it looks. Yeah, you can see, so I've just rubbed this area here and it's changed significantly. So basically what that denotes is that um, the, the strap, if it just was given a good wash and rub down, it would look absolutely fine. On the flip side, let's hold that down there. On the flip side, zero damage. Looks sturdy, zero examples of any early signs of perishing and then I'll flip it over to the other side of the strap so here you can see exactly the same just some <laughs> obvious need for a bit of a bit of a clean as I always say I don't clean up or polish my watches for these videos I take them off my wrist and show you them as they are because I want you to see the real, the reality of owning these watches. No problems there. Again, I'll give you another example of giving it a bit of a, a clean. So if you watch that bit there now, I'm just going to give it a quick wipe. And over here. Yeah, you can see that was just a wipe with a with my t-shirt actually, and those oils have come off showing the original kind of texture of the rubber strap. So no concerns there whatsoever. I think the strap's in great condition. I think the little rubber um, clasp on there is fine as well. You can see the, the metal buckle shows no signs of deterioration, of rusting, and surprisingly enough, very little sign of, um, very little sign of scratching as well. I am, um, let's face it, you know, you know how I feel about these watches and general G-Shocks. I'm impressed, but I'm not surprised. They're just, they're just superb bits of kit and they'll, always uh, perform in terms of keeping keeping themselves in good condition no matter what you do to them that's why I love them that's why you know when I think of the fact that I bought this for what was it about 99 US dollars and I know that this will 
last longer than me and I can pass it on to my grandchildren. That's what I love about them. So, um, so yeah, I think in summary, it's fair to say that I've worn this watch a fair amount. Admittedly, I haven't worn it in the harshest environments, but I've worn it in enough situations where it's taken, you know, a bit of uh, a bit of abuse, and it's lasted very well. It could do with a good clean. I think is the only thing I can say there, and I will be looking at what to do about that screen. As I say, guys, please, if you um, have any suggestions about what to do about the screen there, should I try rubbing it out with something? Uh, or shall I just approach the Casio's local Casio supplier and say, can you get me a new one? I can look into that as well. Guys, as always, if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Uh, I'm trying to gauge what kind of things you like the most. To be honest, I always just do what I like, which is um, showing G-Shocks, which are used in real life, how they cope with those situations, so that if you're thinking of buying one yourself, you can get a good indication of how it will last if you invest in one. So yeah, please like and subscribe, keep watching, and I promise you'll have some more interesting insights like this coming up soon in the future. Good evening.